in keeping with the first portion of this verse, my wife has said that she is submitting to my authority and I'm introducing it. We're reading from 1 Peter 3. I'm Carolyn, by the way. And I'm Jim. <laughs> All right, 1 Peter 3, verse 1. In the same way, you wives must accept the authority of your husbands. Then even if some refuse to obey the good news, your godly lives will speak to them without any words. They will be won over by observing your pure and reverent lives. This verse is often referred to, and it, this one is specifically for believers with a non-believer, and that really works both ways. But uh, the first verse about the authority of the husband, uh, I always thought that that was a issue in our lives early on because she didn't have any respect for me. And that's really why I think we've been given the authority. It's because men are born needing respect. And when we don't get it, we revolt. And that hurts relationships. You have to be the best wife and mother, if you have children, that you can be. Don't be holier than thou. Display the fruits of the Spirit with gentleness and kindness and just the way you handle everything, the good times and the bad times. And this is really a good verse, first of all, in treating all unbelievers that way. Mm -hmm. If you are judging them, you're not going to appeal to them, and they're not going to be excited about the way you live your life. And it works in all relationships. If we are being gentle, pure, kind, we're going to have a lot more influence than if we're being bossy and... Nagging. Insistent on having our way, selfish, prideful, all those good things that we have because we're in a fallen world. Another very important thing is prayer. Pray for your husband or wife. Pray that you'll display the right aspects of your Christianity. Pray that the Lord will send the right people into his path or her path that will bring it out even more that he will really see that it's not just you, it's, it's a movement. And we do have examples of a prayerful, submissive, loving woman winning her husband to Christ. I just talked to one the other day and she was telling me some of the background of their time together and when she was angry and hurt because he wasn't doing the right thing, they were as far apart as they could be. But when she started praying for him daily and repeating out loud, you know, I love him, I want to honor him, I want to show him the respect he deserves, he did ultimately succumb to that loving approach and became a believer and comes to church here. Whether you're a husband or a wife, be a servant in your home. Be a, a servant in your community and at work. The seven spiritual passions are important. Reading and studying the word. Praying, giving, serving, worship, evangelism and discipleship, fellowship and family. If one of you is an unbeliever, there's going to be some disconnect there. You may not be able to do all that you want to do, but you're going to have to lovingly make compromises with your spouse, and the Lord will honor that. Hopefully down the road, your spouse will become a believer, and the time you thought you lost doing these things, or as much as you wanted to do, he will restore. With your spouse and anyone else, if you are putting their best before your own, you're going to have a successful marriage, a successful friendship, a successful relationship.